All right, uh, that's good. Now I'm just going to fire off a quick tweet to let everybody know that we are live and ready to go. Oh, I almost just tagged the wrong Space Invader 1. <laughs> Oops, that would have been stupid. All right, so I think uh, the best way to start this is just by opening up the hardware and hoping that everything worked the way it was supposed to. <laughs> so, this one's very large anti-static bag, obviously for a motherboard. So that is the uh, Cirrus Logic There's video watching. card. Yep. Mm -hmm. let, me, uh, let me aim my camera a little higher so it's easier for me to, to do these. There we go. That's a little better. All right, video card. Hey, what's up, Belmont? How's it going? Waiting for concrete to show up. Dude, I gotta bother you one of these days. I have questions about when I need to upgrade my driveway. I hate to do it at work, and I hate to bother you after you go home from work, but one of these days, I, I'd love to have a chat just to make sure I know exactly what to ask for, where I could get a concrete pad versus where I should put, you know, actual tar. I'm gonna have to just annoy the hell out of you one day with questions, if you don't mind. All right, this. Okay, let's hope this isn't the part where we find they've sent the wrong bit. <laughs> yeah, right. Ah, uh, thanks, Belmont. I'll, I'll annoy you over a weekend or something. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is the board that goes in the PCIe by one slot with that. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Funny how so many things from AliExpress come with these USB A to A cables. I have never seen those out of Asia before. Only, only there. Yeah. But that would go in here. Okay. So we'll be putting that in in a bit. And then this should be the board. Yep. Okay. So far, so good. Master Safer, that Predator poster is sick behind you. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a great movie. I watched it again. I watched it every couple of years, and it always seems to hold up. It's, it's still good today, isn't it? It really is. All right, so this is the acrylic enclosure that you suggested I pick up. Uh, so let me mm. rearrange this so I can show it a little bit better on camera. This is a piece of wood on top of here, so there's no static charge going through wood. I don't have to worry about that. Um, grab my electric screwdriver. Did you have to modify this case at all? Did you have to cut it or anything? For... I I did, yeah. Um, I added, well, my case was metal. Um, I think I had to cut a piece out and hot glue the um, adapter. I was just using this the other day. Uh, I'm glad the battery's still charged. My wife ordered a piece of furniture, and it was one of those that, like, you know, comes with instructions that were so bad you wish they were IKEA instructions, and even those are terrible. And it comes with a little Allen wrench, expecting you to put the entire thing together. And I was like, "Ugh, all right, let me go get my tools." And on a whim, I grabbed this and thought, "I wonder if this bit will fit." And it was the perfect fit for the assembly, so the whole thing took an hour instead God. of two. It's one of those moments where it's like. One of the small wins in life that you don't forget. <laughs> so what have you been up to, Ed? I've been obviously following your channel, but do you have any projects, any videos coming out soon that you want to tell people about? I, I do. Well, um, hopefully tomorrow I'll be releasing a video 
looking to do a ZFS replication. Okay. Um, for you Unraid guys out there. Um, personally, I've kind of um, been getting into Home Assistant and 3D printing as late. Oh, wow. Um, I got a Bamboo Labs, um, what do you call it, X1 Carbon 3D printer um, on recommendation from one of the Unraid devs, and it is really awesome. Um, in fact, I'll, I've got here charging up down here. I'll show you. Um, I've got this here, which I'm going to put on the wall in the house. And a friend of mine helped me design this case for a Samsung tablet. Oh, cool. And um, he's over in South Carolina. He's the best boat builder in the United States. So, Mark, if you're watching this, thank you very much for helping me design this case and for putting up with me saying, I really want a Commodore 64 logo in the bottom right-hand <laughs> corner. So... <laughs> <laughs> I think he thought I was a bit crazy when I said, like, Mark, can we just add that? <laughs> but yeah, 3D printed that out, so I'm hoping to put a few of them around the house to um, control Home Assistant, but it's a rabbit hole Home Assistant is, I tell you. you know, so um, I, I just had a thought here real quick. So this bracket um, comes with, I think this is a metal, metal shield on the bottom to act as a spacer. Hmm. And once I plug this in, the bolts on the top of the cards are really going to hold this thing in place. So rather than yeah. trying to spend time, especially on stream, cutting and, and trying to mount this, why don't I just use some industrial strength double-sided tape? Because that's really yeah, just going to keep it from sliding back in, um, this way, which tape is amazing for doing that, for preventing that. And the, the screws are actually what's going to hold it in place. Yeah, that would be good, I think. All right. Well, lucky for me. Bam! 15 pounds there's of one, pressure. There's one thing we've got to think about, Bob, is are we going to be able to get the cable through the side of the case, that USB cable? So, I think so, because there's a bunch of holes in the case. It might just have oh, yeah, to be a little yeah. bit creative while doing that. But um, let's, let's see here. If I had a longer... I mean, I guess I could also try to see after we get it plugged in if a USB 3.0 extension cable will work. So we're going to have to do a little bit of um, messing with to get that through. Unless I put it through the bottom, possibly. Let me see that. Would that work? Yeah, it should go right through the bottom. And there is enough space. So I think that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to get this mounted in. And I'll try to do a silly ghetto solution for that. Uh, and we will try booting it up where I'll just have it sitting right next to the server over there. And if it works, then before we get into gaming, I'll try one of my USB 3.0 extension cables to see if we can sit it up here on the table. And that'll also be yeah. a good thing for people to know who want to do this project themselves. Can you use it in a scenario like that or not? So, Yeah, it'd be interesting if a USB yeah. extension, if it manages to, you know, the signal doesn't drop over a long cable. I've had very, very mixed results with extension cords and USB. Um, USB 2 stuff makes zero difference. But as long as it's powered, as long as you have like a powered hub or something, USB 3 and up, it, that's when it's always hit or miss. Yeah, what we've got to hope as well, Bob, thinking about it, is I don't know the wiring of a USB cable. Possibly this is just, I would imagine coming out of China, these are just standard standard cables yes um usb a to usb a and there's nothing kind of special about it like you know pin one just goes to pin one and there's no no crossovers or anything but we won't uh, know until we actually try it so no. yeah maybe we try that last then in case it is a crossover and we killed everything by plugging it in that way <laughs> yeah they're like you know i wired up some network cables the other day and um I couldn't really be bothered to follow the plan, you know, the type A and type B, because it was for some CCTV cameras. So I thought, oh, they only used like, um, you know, a um, hundred um, connection on them anyway. So I thought I'll just wire pin one to pin two. I can't be bothered to look up the um, the diagram. And it worked really, really badly. <laughs> oh. The picture kept dropping out. So I had to then, you know, get the ladder out, go up onto the cameras and rewire everything again. So, yeah. Wasn't wasn't my best idea. 
being lazy cost me a lot more work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it happens. All right, so I think, I think that's going to work here. Let me try to grab the other card and just make sure it all lines up. It does all seem to fit very nicely in that case. A lot seems a lot nicer than the one I had, I think. Let me... So there is some spots where the tape's kind of getting mushed down, but once again, the only mm. purpose of this is to prevent it from moving left and right, which not even tacked down, it's already doing. So we're, yeah. for if anybody's just joining us now and you saw that tape, we are not holding this together with tape. We are very, very simply keeping it from sliding around and holding it together with screws. And, you know, for the record, if this was a prototype, I probably would have had no problem holding it together with tape too. But I wanted to show something. The reason I waited for this follow-up is because I wanted all of these parts to come in to show people how cool this could be. I didn't want to do a couple of cards laying on an anti-static mat and a table. I wanted to show people an external enclosure that you could have for your old, your old cards. So this truly is a hybrid emulation solution because you're using real video cards and real sound cards and just using a modern CPU that's meant to look like a retro CPU. So yeah. this appears to be okay. Looks good. I probably could have centered it a tiny bit more. Maybe I could try just a little bit now, but I think I'm very comfortable with this because once again, the tape, the only purpose of this oh, tape- look at, um, the, um, is that the sand card at the back? It's the screws made it pop out of the, I'm 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 trying to point and show you on the screen. Look at the PCI connection bit. It's popping out the back. Oh, good point. The the screw has made it at an angle. Yeah. All right. So you know what we're gonna do there? Two pieces Put of a tape. Put washer on. Two pieces of tape. <laughs> I, I I think what it is is um the because okay. it's a little bit too high, if you've got a washer or something you could put underneath the screws, it's not going to clamp it down so much, or there's something you can jam under there. Even a piece of cardboard or something. And will this still fit properly here if I have washers? Yeah, totally. Okay. So, yeah, we do have washers. Right here, in fact. And actually, oh. uh, I think I might even be able to use these thumb screws too. So let me try that. Uh, I think these washers are too thick, but I definitely have other washers. So that's not, not a worry. Or are they? I don't know. We'll find out in one second. Does the Perspex actually cover where the screw holes are? Because with thumb screws, if it does, I don't think the Perspex will sit flush. I will tell you in a second. Fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, everything seems to fit now. And yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, well, perfect. Yeah. Four points for the kit, I guess. Let me get this out of the way. How much was the case, um, Bob? Uh, it's the one that you suggested. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Yeah, Jeff, that's a video card next to the sound card. Uh, if everything works well, within 10 minutes, we should be getting weird in a good way, showing you all the stuff Ed's been doing for a while. That other thumb screw. Let me get... Uh... So it's not 100% centered, but I would call this good enough. You'll be able to get all of the connectors in, everything should fit, and I mean... And it doesn't rattle. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. So that's got to be good. All right. So all, all good signs there. So... Oh, that might actually work perfectly. Let me see if I can get the USB cable out of that.
Oh, no, I might actually have to do some cutting then, which should be, yeah, I am. But that isn't going to be hard because I have a Dremel that should be able to do this pretty quickly. Um, Unless somebody has another solution. I mean, I could just use a pair of cutters, but usually when I do that, it just cracks the whole plastic in a very bad way. Yeah, I'd definitely go for a Dremel on that. So let me mark this off. I remember one time I couldn't find my Dremel, so um, I really upset my wife when I we had like a gas hob, so I heated up a knife till it went red hot and then tried to kind of burn it through. <laughs> I managed to fill the kitchen with smoke and um, ruin the knife, so I wasn't very popular that day. That is absolutely some shit I would do, 100%. <laughs> All right, let me grab my Dremel from the other room here. I'll be, uh, I wonder if my mic will go this far. I guess we'll find out. So Jeff's asking what video card is it? It's a Cirrus Logic um, PCIe GPU. All right, I think I found one. Hey, what's up, Analog? I wonder how much of a mess this is going to make. Am I going to regret this and spend the next couple hours after live stream vacuuming? And when I, when I was putting that piece of furniture together the other day, it left like cardboard dust all over the place. And I just was like, ah, fuck it. And I took my leaf blower inside the house, opened the front door and blew it all out. And it worked perfectly. I've done the exact same. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's up, Tony? Good morning. I think I'm very glad I ended up with the acrylic case and not the metal one now, because this is going to be so much easier. Oh, yeah. I really like that acrylic case. Everything seems to fit a lot easier than it did in my metal case. Um, if anybody is interested in doing this, as soon as this stream is over, um, I'm going to be writing a post. Post might not be out till tomorrow, but uh, I will put links to absolutely everything that I used in this, uh, just so people could build their own should they choose to. All right, let me see. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm definitely the one collecting all the bits here. That's, uh, that's fine. I'll stand in front and let my gut catch it. quickly why I usually have my friends Dremel things for me and I don't do it myself. Let me go uh, flap this out over the sink real quick. <laughs> All right, I just realized everybody's speakers probably just had the sound of my hands hitting my shirt, <laughs> blow the plastic <laughs> off of them. Apologies. Okay, so this should actually end up being a pretty darn good fit then, all things considered. Let's uh, let get the part out. Yeah, M MTA T3 is asking if that's a PCIe 1 to times 2 PCI. It certainly is. And we've got a sound card and a PCI graphics card in it at the moment. 
I think there's probably one more thing I should do just to make sure the surface is the way it needs to be. So let me, uh, let me just finish up the by far most boring part of the stream. Second to when we're waiting for things to reboot. That usually takes the cake as the most boring, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right. Right now, I don't have plastic bits everywhere. By the way, do you like my spider vacuum? This was when uh, I first moved into this place. There was thousands of spiders. So I bought this thing just to suck up spiders. And I'm hanging out the window one day and it fell out the window because I was getting a giant one. And I just taped it back together. It's worked fine since. All right, so we have this piece. This should line up. It'd be very funny if I cut the wrong side or something. No, this is, uh, looks like we are good and we could even insert this after the fact, which was the goal. So let me toss my uh, Dremel out of the way so I don't end up messing it up. Um, how long was the cable that came with yours? Is it like a three footer like this one? Um, how long, how long is that one, Bob? About no, this is about two a meter. Feet, three feet tops, probably two feet. Yeah, I think it's probably about the same, to be honest. Okay. And uh, this thing. I have seen um, the adapters that kind of sit on top of the PCIe slot, but then you've got to think to yourself, how is the card going to actually sit there on top of it then? Because it's going to be higher than the slots on your um, case. So yeah. I never saw, the point, never saw the point of those, but it would be nice to be able to have it somehow inside the case, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I kind of like the external. I, I think it's a, a really great visualization of a hybrid emulation mm. solution. As weird and cheesy as that might sound, I think it looks cool. Yeah, MT8, MT83, yeah, easier to swap cards. That is very true. I'm not tightening these down until we get everything lined up. Now, there is a SATA slot on here as well that I'm assuming was for power. Did you ever use that on yours? No, um, I never bothered using it. I didn't. I, I did try putting a SATA cable into it, but my card comes back quite a lot over that, and I ended up having to mod a SATA cable to actually better make it fit, and it didn't make any difference. So. Interesting. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll get lucky re as well. Reading reading through the instructions on the website where you ordered ordered that one i think it said that most of the time it isn't needed all right just tightening down these last few or the, or the first few i guess i should say all right so once again, what we have here are classic VGA and audio cards. They're bolted in here. Uh, so even if I didn't put the double-sided tape, they would stay in place. But if I did mm. that, they might bounce around a little. And as you could all see, it didn't. And there is how it's going to be connected. Uh, so I guess we're at the point now where I just power down the Unraid server and... Uh, and insert the card. But there is actually something, uh, I'll do a screen share. There is something that I wanted to just double check before I did that. I was, I kept forgetting to ask you, um, and this'll be, uh, this'll be relevant to the stream anyway. So uh, let me get logged in here.
If you remember in the last stream, Bob, when we checked the PCIe slots for pass through, only one of them actually worked. Yes. All right. Oh, so right. Yeah, the other one was just PCI, wasn't it? That's why. Okay. Ignore, ignore that comment. Okay. So you see. Um, let me try to make this the same size as the stream. So. All right, so you should be able to see what I have here. Funny, I got a whole bunch of notifications saying the temperature went up to 46 at one point. The temperature in, in here hasn't really changed. I wonder what, what the heck happened with that. But uh, anyway, so under tools, system devices, uh, I wonder if I could zoom out to make this. Yeah, that might make it easier for the stream here. And then I'll pull. Okay, sorry, I should have done this before, but. So, uh, this device right here. This is a SATA controller that at the moment, the only thing that's connected to it is the CD-ROM drive in the server. So. You had suggested originally using USB CD-ROM drives so that you could choose whether you want to use it with things like uh, over here I have uh, Make MKV installed uh, as one of the Docker apps. So if I go USB, I could, as long as my VM is not powered on, I could either use it here or use it in the VM. But is there a way to do it with SATA devices, SATA CD-ROM? um it works very badly okay yeah so you you, you might you, mm -hmm. you could try passing through the whole controller but when you try and do it without the controller being passed through it doesn't work very well so the better thing to do if i wanted both was to, would be to power this internal cd rom drive off of you know the same power cable but then use a sata to usb adapter run it out the back and then that way I could, uh, or, or actually I could even run it internally to one of the onboard USB connectors on the motherboard and then just do it that way. Yeah, yeah, that would work. Okay, also at the moment, since we're using Windows 98, this is kind of useless because I would have to have Windows 98 drivers for this SATA controller. Yeah, so we're much better to use an emulated CD on IDE bus. Right. Okay, so I am going to leave this here for now just because I've been, uh, that's how I've been doing a bunch of ripping was with VMs and that, but that I will, I will change that in the future. So nothing else to prepare for now, just power off the machine, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just need to power off, then wait for it to come back up and hopefully it should have its own IO MMU group. Okay. All right, let me get this up and running here. As you probably heard, I have Discord beeping in the background, so I just uh, put that all on streamer mode so we no longer hear it. And the server just went off. Okay, so what we're going to do now is connect this piece into the PCI port um, and then run the cable through. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna undo this. I'm gonna move this out of the way and let's make sure I don't knock any power out of anything. <laughs> we'll see if I screw this up. Ugh. 
Um, MT83 is asking, Ed, while waiting, do you know whether versions exist with more PCIe slots or ISA slots exist as well? I've never seen any with more PCIe slots than the two, and most of them seem to be only one, and I've never seen any with ISA slots, and I've never seen an AGP to PCIe. Either, so there are uh, there are ISA ones. As soon as we finished our last oh, stream, is that? Uh, yeah, as soon as we finished our last stream, a few people reached out and said that people like us were doing exactly the same type of thing of routing older cards and newer um, newer systems, and they had made homebrew versions of it, but they were they're basically always out of stock. Um, and I, mm. I don't mean that as a dig. It just it is what it is, right? Uh, so. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on that, but hopefully someday we'll be able to just pick those up right from one of those awesome homebrew developers that could do this for us. Right. Yeah, I always wonder why there's never been an AGP to PCIe adapter. That would be really nice. I have a lot of wires going into this thing, so I'm going to lay out here to plug it in and hope that just works. Uh... I'm going to laugh so hard if I turn this thing on and it just kills the whole Unraid server. Because <laughs> I got the guy to talk to here to restore it. But uh, I don't want this to turn into let's fix Bob's server stream. I want this to continue to be an awesome hybrid emulation stream. These things are much harder to work on sideways. All right, so that's MT83, in yeah, definitely. I, th I think you're right. Ugh. That is in a PCIe by 16 slot. It, it was only a PCIe by one, but that's the only slot I had free. And I got the cable uh, with just enough room. Is that, is that the same slot as you plugged the um, USB into the other day? No, but it is the same slot that I ha that we had the working uh, capture card the other day. Oh, so we have had something working in the same slot. Yes. Okay. Cool. cool. All right. So it's all plugged in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It would help if I hit the kill switch and back. Uh, I'll tell you something interesting. I was on a podcast the other day, and the guy, um, um, Naz Compares, the channel's called, I noticed in the background he had a Super Nintendo controller, and it was actually made by the brand Buffalo. They used to make copies of the Super Nintendo controller. Yep. Uh, I'd, ne I'd never seen anything like it. They are incredibly low latency. I had a couple of them, and a friend of mine told me they were good. And I trust my friend, but he's not like a lag analyzing kind of person. So I was like, oh, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll try it out. And then once we got the ability to test latency down to the sub millisecond level, we just started going nuts testing a bunch of controllers. And that turned out to be one of the highest performing ones. Wow. I, I never knew Buffalo could have made anything like that at all. Hey, the importer, uh, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. The importer said for some reason they had to resubscribe to me on Floatplane because they had a payment processing issue in July and automatically canceled the subscription. So, so did Patreon. And uh, I, it, it was very weird because Patreon just had to send out a whole uh, notification for people because not only were people's uh, payments getting declined, it was getting flagged as if it was like a scam payment. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's so weird that that would happen to two different services at the same time. Well, at least I could do is get this in focus for you all. Where are we going here? All right. Uh, so you could kind of sort of see my mess of stuff with the acrylic thing there. 
Jeff, it is possible to emulate these older graphics cards and stuff like DOSBox does a pretty darn good job of it, but it's, as with most software emulation, it's almost never going to be perfect. There's always going to be something. Um, ooh, all right, we have our first issue. Uh, where did that go? Oh, where's the error? Alerts. Uh, my error just, uh, there we go. Do you see that one, Ed? Yep, so... When, when stuff's been bound to the VFIO driver earlier, something's changed. And so it's just no longer auto booting the VMs. It's not so, a problem. We can. We yeah, RetroNAS should have nothing connect, connected to it, and it doesn't seem like it does. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, so let me just start that right up. Actually, we're going to need to reboot again anyway, right? We are. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we'll forget that. So let, let's look at let's look at the system devices and see see what we've got there now. There we are, um, group 15. So let's check all of them. Um, Beautiful. And bind to VFIO at boot and give it a reboot and we should better pass that through. And that was it, that was, oh, uh, this must have changed IMO, IOMMU groups. Yeah, so it's pushed it down and... Um, Okay, that's, that explains that's why, the error that we that's got. That's why, it, yeah, it gave us the error, saying something's different. All right, so we shall reboot right now. Um, so when we start up this VM and when I connect to the VGA, I'm going to add another capture card to OBS. However, out of all of the times my streams have crashed, it has either been because my dumbass knocked my router off the top shelf and the power cable came out, <laughs> or it was when I added another source when we were doing stuff like this. So when it comes back up, if at any point in this live stream, it just freezes, just go to youtube.com forward slash retro RGB and uh, it, it will be back up in like a minute, so. This is usually really good about auto connecting. So while we while we wait for it to, don't worry, I don't need to refresh or anything. It usually connects pretty perfectly. My server takes ages to boot, so I often just open up a command prompt and ping the IP address of the server. Oh yeah. With a with a tack T at the end, so it keeps on doing it, and then. <laughs> And then I kind of know when it's back up. Yeah, I was getting, uh, I was getting impatient. We should just wait a second. If the spelling's correct, try running Windows Diagnostics, Network Diagnostics, because that always works. I don't think I've ever run Windows Network Diagnostics and it ever work. Yeah. All right, it is working on my other browser, so let me just try this again here. All right, here we go. Here we are, we're back. Okay, let me... No error at all this time. That's good. So uh, we should go into VMs, Windows 98. Uh, RetroNAS automatically started. So that's great. That's um, I just want to go into this as well just to see if it automatically checked off uh, that USB controller. 
uh, which it didn't. So beautiful. I could just add that. And, I, uh, I think what you should do, to be honest, um, Bob, is on that one, is look at the XML and remove manually, because sometimes it keeps something in that had a different... Um, had a different ID. So if you just scroll down to the bottom on the page. Yeah. And then just the first host dev tag at the top underneath video, line 114. If you delete from line 114 right the way down to the last host, it's right down at the bottom, kind of underneath there. Keep going right down. Select all of that. Dan, Dan Moore, it's off, it's off, off the bottom of the screen. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, down, down to line 134 from 114. Just delete that. Now click update. And then you're going to be sure that all of the pass-through devices are not there. In case something was wrong, then you can just add them back now. That is a great idea. Okay. And now we'll go into 98. And uh, I guess we could try the same for this, but I don't remember if we ever actually did any of that. I don't yeah. think we passed any hardware. Oh, we have, have we? Oh, that's um, yeah, a USB device. So 103 to 109, right? Yeah. yeah. If anybody wants to know how we got here, uh, scroll through that original stream. Um, if I have time to, I could just cut pieces out of both of these and make it into like a 10 minute video. Uh, only one CPU is needed, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I don't have any more than that. 512 mega RAM is enough? Absolutely fine. Kind of what I thought, I just wanted to double check. And now we do these two middle ones, right? Yeah. Creative that's Lab it. Sound Blaster, Game Port. Uh, I don't well, see the video uh... card. Ah, video card's going to be higher up, um, under video, basically, in the up, up, that's it. Choose ah, graphics card. Yeah, see, Ed, this is Serious why I logic. really, it is. really wanted to do this with you on stream. You know how long that would have taken me to figure out if, I, if you weren't here with me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so update. Um, just run the um, run run the Windows ninety eight container again. Oh, um, wait, sorry, not, not right. there. So we go just, to just, just to add back the um, so it emulates a Pentium and that kind of thing. And we go to start here. Just start. Yeah, it will just um, add the XML back in then. So uh, if you were on la the last stream, what Ed's container does is set all of the settings to make the CPU look like a Pentium three and cleans up a couple other things. So whenever you make changes to the VM, you have to rerun this in Docker, which as you just saw, took about one second. So not a big deal. Uh, what would have happened if I tried to boot it without doing that? It, it would have still worked, but it would not have actually, it wouldn't have thought it's a Pentium three CPU. Or Pentium 2, I can't remember what I, I put it as now. Gotcha. All right, so let me it, start. It would probably work. Let me start this out and see. Yeah, let's do it. And, oh, hey. Okay, so just click, click OK onto that. And let's just try running it again. Same thing, just start. Yeah, let's just try just twice, just to check. Okay, so I think we might have to move the PCIe to another slot, possibly. Or remove that USB yeah. and put this in its place, maybe. Yeah. Let, let's, um, let's first try just passing through only one of the devices, just just so we can see. No, in fact, that wouldn't work just passing through one anyway, to be honest. No, we, we're going to need to move it. OK, uh, let me cancel this out then and just power down. Yeah. yeah. 
And just a tip for anyone, if you're moving around PCIe devices, it's always a good idea to go to the system devices first and unbind any VFIO devices, then you don't get the error when you reboot. Uh, all right, and uh, so it's powering off now. Let me just wait for everything to go completely down before I start yanking on it. This is pretty freaking cool, though. Um, so I'm going to remove that USB pass-through card that we've already kind of proven works fine. We've tested it a couple of times, last time and this time, and move this into its place. I feel like I'm sprawling out like it's an OnlyFans stream. <laughs> All right, so far so good. All right, USB cable still in solid. I'm gonna slap the case back together, plug it in, and cross our fingers. And since we're probably gonna have to reassign the devices again, since it already uh, kind of bounced it around like that, all right? Since it moved the card down last time. Yeah. And in. Powered on. Right. If we tried PCM, it lacks the fun of actual hardware, but it's still fun that needing to have 25 systems in your room. Um, I've been doing emulation since the 90s, and uh, I, my first website was all about highlighting all of the updates in the emulation scene, and I've always loved it. It's just, it's different. It's the same reason I would like I prefer Mr. over software emulation in, in many cases, not all, definitely not all, but uh, so yeah, it's, you know, there's no wrong answer.
So, Bob, which, which um, GPU do you have in the server normally? Is it uh, um, an, an iGPU, is it? It's just the onboard um, built in. I don't have a, a PCIe no. GPU in it. I was just wondering if the actual server is actually trying to boot up with the using using the Cirrus logic card, and that's why it's saying something's busy. So everything seems checked off. If we needed to, we could remove that because that's just running the CD-ROM drive for now. Uh, but I think let's just... It shouldn't make any difference. Let me just try this and see what happens. Do you have a monitor connected? I have a capture card. All right, so it says started. Oh, okay. Cool. So... Um... I do not seem to be getting any signal. Uh, I'm going to give it a minute to boot, but if I don't get anything through the capture card, I will plug it into a VGA monitor I have sitting kind of right next to me uh, for this exact reason. I was hoping to do it via capture right. so we could all see it a little clearer, but... No, interesting. Okay, so let me just grab that monitor and uh, see what we got. So we probably want to shut down the VM so it can boot with the, with the monitor already connected. Say that again, Ed, I'm sorry. We should shut down the VM before you connect the monitor because it may be that the GPU is just not, connect, not detecting a monitor on the end. Possibly. Oh. I didn't realize that was something that could happen in 98. I've no idea. <laughs> Just hit stop? Um, yeah, try hitting stop. And, no, it's going to have to be four stop. I don't think it's going to take a okay. signal that way. Oh, this is the heavy one. All right, deep breath, deep breath. <laughs> Trying to make it so we can all see it. Uh, did I do that on camera? Or are you all looking at that? No, what an idiot, sorry. Um. Okay, and I just need a VGA cable and a power cable. I think you all could see that. Let me plug this in. Power on. By the way, the light is on in this little box thing. Um, it, so it does seem to be getting power and signal. Right. 
and these aren't modern GPUs that need their own, you know, 400 watt power supply, obviously, so. All right. And firing it up. What do we get? Anything? Something? It says Windows 98 started. So you know what I just realized? We, let me switch the setting back. Um... We force stop again. <clears throat> I checked the sound card, but I don't think I checked the video card. Oh, the video card is passed through. I, I could see it on the... All right, so it is Sirius Logic graphics card right here. Yeah. Um, uh, so let me hit update anyway, and then I'll re rerun your Docker, and then rerun that VM again. There's something else we can try, but it's a bit... Bit of a long shot, but it might work. So, as you could see, can I get the zoom all the way down there? The uh, light is blinking. It's not getting any. What 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 I'd like you to try, if you would, please, Bob, mm -hmm. is can you reboot the server? And we'll see on the monitor if during the boot that the Cirrus logic actually displays the unraid boot up sequence. If it does, that means it's the primary GPU, and we're going to need to dump the VBIOS of the Cirrus logic card um, because the computer will. Will will um, shadow the the VBIOS as it boots, and it can have difficulty passing through when it's the primary GPU because this may now be the primary GPU in the system. If All right, that makes well, it sense. is rebooting. Nothing so far, and it, it should just... Oh, wait, wait, it clicked. We have a click. There's a click. And the light stopped flashing ah. in the monitor. Right. You are, you are correct. Okay. Should I power the so, server off before it boots? No, because we're, we're going to have to dump the VBIOS, and um, I've got a script I made that hopefully will do it. Um, so would you kindly explain... <laughs> To the people in the chat, definitely not to me, <laughs> what, what dumping the VBIOS is and why we need to do it. And obviously, I mean, explain it to me. <laughs> okay, so, um, basically, there's a BIOS on a graphics card. And when, when a computer boots up, it shadows that VBIOS as it boots when it's the primary card. And so then when you try and pass through the graphics card to a VM, it kind of does it minus the VBIOS, which pretty much tells it how to work. So when that's the case, you have to manually dump the VBIOS and then also pass the VBIOS through to the VM with the card. I'm not sure if I'm explaining myself very well. <laughs> but it, it needs... It, Basically, it doesn't know how to use the card because that part is missing during the pass through because it's still being used by the server. I, 
I've lost you, Bob. I can't hear you at the moment if you're talking. Oh, yep. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I turned my mic down to be less echoey, but... Um, okay, that actually does make perfect sense. And uh, while I knew what a V-BIOS was, I had no idea what we were going to do in context of this, but you just explained it perfectly, mm -hmm. so... You see, what's happened now is, is we're not seeing any more writing on the screen because we bound the graphics card to VFIO, so that's why we're not seeing it finishing the boot on the monitor. Okay, and I wonder if that's why we still got that error here, too. So, all right, walk me through what you think. Right, so, if we could... If you can do a Google search for Space Invader 1 GitHub, there's a script there that hopefully might do what we need it to do. Okay, uh, dump GPU vBIOS. That's the one. So if you copy, copy that script. Throw that in the chat for anybody curious. Uh... And we're going to need the user scripts plugin on the Unraid server. Okay, I have this queued up. Um, I have that queued up right there. And uh, what what was the next step? Um, just make sure we got the the user scripts plugin. Maybe you've already got it. I do, user scripts. Yeah, you do. Yeah, so just um, click onto the icon there and add a new script. Just call it dump vBIOS or, or anything really. And then edit the script. On, on the left, there's a little cog. You click onto that there and then click edit script. And if you just paste in the script there, um, could, could you just move my picture to the right-hand side so I can just read the script, please? Ah, sure. perfect. Yeah. Great. Okay, if you, if you scroll up a moment, I just want to just check where it's... Um... The very top, you mean? Yeah, right to the top of the script. Um... Okay, so for, for vBIOS name, just call it Cirrus Logic on line 18 could there be a space I would, in I, would, I would make i would make it just you know one word and then okay. um, put an underscore and have dot rom at the end please um okay and I'm assuming you've got a user share ISOs so that's fine it should do that so yeah just just click save changes and now run the script. Um, don't worry, it will, it will make an error when it runs, but that's, ex that's expected. So now what we need to do is where it says 3, 0, 3, colon, 0, 2, dot, just, just the number before, beforehand. Yeah, so, that, so now we need to copy that, that number, go back into the script. And where the G, that, that, that's it, exactly. And let's paste that in and now save. And now it will do its best to actually dump that vBIOS. Okay, so it might have put your server into sleep. Uh, yes. And so just power it back so, on, right? So just press the button on the front of the server and that should wake it out of sleep and then it will try and dump the vBIOS now. Okay. It's always pretty difficult to dump a vBIOS when it's the primary card. In fact, I wonder if I've already got the vBIOS I could send you if this doesn't work. I might actually have it, to be honest. Which I should have thought about first, really.
Right, don't worry about that saying it's less than 70 kilobytes. That's expected for that card. So now if you click on to done. Uh, let me. Uh, yeah, and I have the Cirrus Logic ROM file. It's in the vBIOS folder that you created with that script. What, what size is it, please? 32 kilobytes. That sounds like it's about right for that card. So now we need to go back to the VM settings. And if we scroll down just underneath where the GPU section is, you'll see a graphics ROM BIOS. And if we browse to that file, in do the I have ISO to keep show, it in this folder, or could I move it in the, where the VMs are? Oh, you you could move it anywhere you want, but it's just easy to browse to there, really. All right. Yeah, I you can move it move it anywhere. Definitely like to keep that um, with the other VMs. So domain. Odd, it's not letting me paste into that folder. Let me try again. Funny, I can drop it in the domains folder, but it says you need permission to perform this action if I try to put it in the Windows 98 folder. Not at all, does not matter at all, by the way. I was just kind of thought that was interesting. Okay. Right, so let's click apply and then re redo the um the docker patch thing and then we're good to try it. Then just fingers crossed. So another thing that we could do, okay, uh, we could um, plug the audio output into the input of my audio card and then run the video through virtual, uh, virtualized video like we did last time, just to confirm yeah, that this external that. thing is working. Yeah. yeah. But I think what we'd have to do to get the video working to be more sure on your system is to make sure that The server boots not using the Cirrus logic, so it's actually the secondary card as, as opposed to the primary. It's probably probably in the BIOS it's set to use an external GPU as the primary as opposed to the... Um, just one thing can you do, please? Um, yes. Just just run run the script, but before you start the VM, we're just going to take out the emulated sound card. So, yeah, if you go back to VMs now. And then if we look at the XML of the Windows 98 VM, please. And it'll be down somewhere near the bottom. Line 97, if you can just remove 97 and 98. Perfect. And now let's run it. Do I need to rerun your Docker again? No, if you if you rerun that, it will put the emulated sound back in, so. Oh, oh, okay, okay.
wonder what's up with the server now. Just, just try refreshing the page. Just click on the VMs tab again. I'm going to try accessing it from another browser, too. No, nothing. Let me try getting it through Windows Explorer. Nothing. Froze the server. Well, let's, let's give it a reboot. Maybe as it reboots, go into the BIOS, um, Bob, and see if you can set the pr the primary GPU in the BIOS to be the onboard motherboard. Uh, so I could actually probably just do this on the VGA monitor with the this Sirius Logic card, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you should be able to, you should be able to you know press delete or whatever it is to. And then hopefully that'll be enough to make it make the GPU work. Wow, reset didn't even work. All right, let me uh, do a hard kill and back. Give it a few seconds, and uh, I'm also going to plug. The USB port directly onto the motherboard. Sometimes there's issues with uh, certain USB things not coming up from the front ports. I've had that happen before. So like you can't enter the BIOS with uh, certain ports. All right. Oh, I'm staring a spider right in the face. Bye, spider. Oh, I heard the monitor kick in. Yeah, we know the adapter's working because we get a picture out of the Cirrus Logic card. Yeah, good point. All right, delete key to enter setup. No, I already hit the delete key. All right, reboot. Let me try this again. So essentially, all of that dumping of the VBIOS stuff, um, uh, we probably didn't need to do that. We probably should have just gone into uh, into setup. Yeah, you you that, only right? need to dump the VBIOS when it's the primary when when it when it's the primary GPU. Not sure why we're not going in here. Frozen again. Odd. Right, let me try rebooting one more time. All right, that worked. So I'm not going to hit delete until I see that screen up then. You ever have that happen where you, uh, the, um, Computer thinks that if you hit the button a couple of times too many, that it's a, uh, a stuck key. Wow. It's not liking it, is it? I'm just wondering, Bob, just a really random thought. Do you think that the BIOS screen is too high a resolution for what the graphics card can display, maybe? That is very, very plausible. Very plausible. So let me 
Um, and maybe I mean, we need to disconnect, you know, turn the server off, disconnect the cable. Yeah, and then plug, um, I can go right from then, my capture card into the uh, output of the onboard video. Make that easier. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking maybe we might need to disconnect the Cirrus logic to get into the BIOS. Then right, change but... it to be the pri always be the primary as as the old. All right, let me just get um, let me get the display plugged in here and go from there. Yeah, MT eighty three saying exactly the same. We should try without the PCIe card. Okay, Definitely. Okay, so that's unplugged. I am going to unplug camera and connect this. Let's try powering that on again. Let me move you over. Okay, so Ed, I'm going to have to move you off screen so I could see all this real quick. Uh, where? So motherboard settings. I should probably I'll probably go onto the advanced. Yeah. Um, Integrated graphics. Yeah, change that to IGD. Yeah. Anything else that we should change while we're here? No, that that should be all. Okay, and then save configuration and exit. And when it once it comes back up with that J Micron thing, I'm gonna power the server off and then plug it back in the way it was. Yeah, and then then we should be good. Okay. Yeah, the BIOS, it, it did have like a lot of fancy pictures and resolution for sure. More than the poor old little Cirrus Logic could do. <laughs> and I love how all that fanciness, you still have an advanced menu that looks like it's from, you know, 2000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So everything's plugged back in. The external graphics card's plugged in. The monitor is still plugged into it. The server is starting to boot and we're not getting any signal on this, which is good. That's kind of what we were hoping mm -hmm. for. That's what um, we want. server's not up, but I like that the light's not flashing. This is definitely a good sign.
I guess I could have kept the other HDMI cable plugged in so we could see, but I think I'm just being impatient. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, good, good. No errors. Uh, actually, we could, oh, ah, ha, ha, there is errors. Let's see what we got. Oh, no. Oh, we got a parity check as well. You, you may as well just cancel that. Okay. VMs. Tools. I just want to double check system devices are all still the way we had wanted. Yep. Do I need the BIOS file anymore? No, let's just try without it, I think. Okay, both Creative Labs are still there. Gonna run your Docker image. Docker container, sorry. And uh, here we go. We, we could, could um, um, let's not bother right now. I was gonna say we could remove the virtual yeah. sound card, but let's just see if we get a picture before we do anything. says it's started the VGA cable still plugged in this is still plugged in I can pull the power and plug it back in just to No. What do you think? Hmm. That's kind of weird. Um. I was thinking we could. Um, what I'd like to do um, is to actually pass through one of the, say, the Sound Blaster card to a Windows 10 VM and just see, because it's easy for us to detect whether it's detected. I just want to see if it's being detected in a VM. Sure, that'll work. If that, if that makes sense. And then we could do the same with the GPU afterwards. Um, but the GPU, it won't run, it will only run on C BIOS. Hey, what's up, Phil? Pretty good. Excited to get this going. This is one of these fun projects that's just like silly and awesome all at the same time.
Do you think that would be it, though? I think so, because we've got a PCI input device as well, so I'm I'm thinking that's the kind of game controller on the card. Yeah. There's one There's one way to be sure, is, is um, shut down the VM, reboot it, and see if that disappears. Um, re reboot it without it being passed through, I mean. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, I was going to say, I think I'm missing something. <laughs> okay. Uh, did you... So hopefully that will be gone when we when we reboot and we've taken that pass through off. There we go. All right. And here we go. Nothing. It's gone. So that's what okay. we hoped for. Perfect. That's good. So we know the pass through is working. For some reason, our G. We we should try passing through the GPU to the Windows VM as well. And just check that we see it detected in Windows as a second GPU. Although sometimes VMs don't like it when you mix a virtual GPU with a real one. So to do that, I would very simply just hit the plus here, right? Yeah. And then select yeah. the Cirrus graphics. And that's it, right? Yeah. So I'd be interested to see if we could actually get anything to come on the screen through. Although I, I probably think we won't see anything because probably that's set as an OVMF, so an EFI boot and... Obviously, the GPU won't have an EFI BIOS. Sorry, V BIOS. But we should still see it in the hardware list, hopefully. VM's not coming up now. Says it started, but when I oh wait no 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 just I'm being impatient I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Says Microsoft Basic Display Adapter, so that wasn't there before. Yeah, so that will be. That would be the video card then. Yeah, but the video card it will it will never display through this VM. Okay. Because it's um because it's an EFI boot on this VM, it won't display. But we know so it is passing through, so that is a good thing. I have another thought, Bob, that I'm wondering if possibly when it's booting up, I would be interested to try removing the sound card from the enclosure and just trying to boot with the GPU, just in case it's not supplying enough power for both of them as it boots. Makes sense to me. Powering down now. And then if that doesn't work, also try just swapping from one slot to another in the PCI, just, just so we can try all angles. Okay.
I'm going to do both. Uh, I'll remove the sound card and put the graphics card where the sound card slot is. Yep, good idea. Waiting for it to come down. There we go. Finally powered off. Worst case scenario, too, we can still close the stream out with, uh, with using the audio from the Sound Blaster card and virtualized video. But it would still be fun to... Get it working for real. So if we get this working, I wonder if I'd be able to do something like create a groovy MAME arcade VM, put in something like an arcade VGA card, and then run just the VGA cable from my server over to my arcade machine. Yeah. All right. Uh, that would not be for today's stream, <laughs> obviously, but still something I'd like to, to think about at some point, because I just, you know, I, I know I don't, I sound like a broken record here, but I love multi-use devices, and to have an Unraid server that's always a server, but, oh, by the way, we do all of this other stuff with it all the time, I just think it's so much more appealing for your average person to say... Not only am I spending money getting this running as a backup server, I could also do in you know insert long list of stuff here. Yeah, like I, I'm planning on running this um, arcade machine behind me from a VM on the Unraid server. But I also bought a cool gadget the other day, which I'll show you, Bob, when you when I come back up. Uh, I don't know what happened to my washer. I'm going to step on that later. And... So I'll grab something from the drawer down here. Oh, for real? Did I just lose a, the freaking... All right, yep, got it, got it, got it, got it. All right. I'm not going to bother reassembling the full acrylic case now. I don't want to waste anybody's time. Mm. Figure I'll just boot this and see see where we're at. Yeah, if this turns out to be power, it would make sense why that SATA port's there, like MT83 said, but that would be more annoying to set up a, a power for it as well. Although I do have um, a SATA power brick for uh, when you're connecting USB 3.5 inch drives. Yeah. So I could at yeah, least run that. I, to I, bought, I bought a SATA power supply just like that to use with the GPU enclosure. Um, hmm. But it never did any difference to mine, so I kind of scrapped it. But may, maybe maybe different ones are different, depending on how much power the motherboard outputs through the slot, possibly. What PSU is in the server? I think, uh, like, a generic 300 watt. 
I also think I have a long SATA extension cable. I think. But I think for this test, it would be easier just to have the second power supply. Still waiting for the server to come up. Okay, here we go. Should we go into tools first just to double check that it's still system devices? Okay, I'm glad I checked. It's making me repass it through. Mm -hmm. Now reboot again, right? Yeah. We possibly may not need to reboot, to be honest, because it is a GPU, so it won't need to be bound to the VFIO. Yeah, I was just, just out of all the bumps the... in the road we've had, it's probably mm -hmm. safe. While it's rebooting, Bob, I'm going to show you um this here for everyone um okay. it's got a jammer kind of edge connector on it mm -hmm. and you plug a raspberry pi into it here i can get it to go in so your raspberry pi plugs onto the board and you've got a jammer connector and you can put it into an arcade can cabinet and um run like an emulator to power your arcade cabinet through the jammer connector that will connect to the controllers that's awesome so i thought that was pretty cool it was um i got it from a guy in canada who makes them i can't remember who it was now what the store is but it seems pretty cool i haven't tried it out yet but i really want to Still rebooting coming up. Yeah, I think it was um, PCB junkie. You're quite right, that seems to ring a bell. Okay, back up. I guess let me just double check. Just cause why not, right? Well, it takes a second. Okay. Graphics card, 
Um, we could always try the ROM BIOS a second time. Nothing else is there. Do you want me to go into the XML and delete any mention of the Sound Blaster card, or just not bother? Um, don't don't bother for the time being. Okay, so I didn't change anything. Running. So do I need to rerun your Docker? No, let's just see if we just get anything coming on the monitor as it boots. We can worry about the. Okay, um, that happens from time to time. Sometimes, just if you run it again, it will. Um... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's let's go into the XML. I'm wondering if the. Uh, if you scroll right down to the bottom. Yeah, so from line 96 down to 116, if you remove all of that, please. We've got two PCIe things that look like they were trying to be passed through, and one of them probably doesn't exist anymore. And let's remove the sound at the same time. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry, Bob. No, oh, all yeah. good. All good. We don't need to remove the sound. Yeah, so let's just add the card back in now. And um, So do we need to delete that? We, we don't need to because we don't have a sound card in anyway. So just we don't cancel. really need to. Yeah, cancel. We, we just, I'll scroll back up and just go to XML view. We need to add the, um, the GPU back now. Yep, okay. And that's it, right? Yep. Because what it was what it still had in the XML you see is it had the zero three zero zero dot two, which was the sound part of the XML. So it doesn't strip it out when you remove pieces out of the XML. Nothing's happening on the VGA monitor. No. Should we disable the uh, graphics card and just try to boot up in a VM window just to make sure that's not the issue somehow? The VM didn't get corrupt. Yeah, uh, good idea. Would the VBIOS make a difference? Should we try it with that real quick first? Yeah, we, we can do it. And also, there's something else I'd like to try as well. Is um, changing the machine type. I'm just double and triple checking that, uh, yeah, everything's plugged in, plugged in evenly, the card's not sticking up or anything, it's solid into the monitor. Yeah, no, all right, so I'll kill this, and then uh, what is the next step that we should do? Just one final thing on this one for the moment is if you edit the VM again. Okay. And under machine type where it says i440FX 7.1, let's go back to say version 3. Uh, so if you, where it says machine, just under, yep. underneath the memory amount, if you click yep. the little drop down arrow there. I'm at 3 now. You watch it on YouTube yeah. or in your oh, oh, okay. Oh, you, oh, I didn't see it go to three. Yeah, so let, let's try that. Um, just an, an older version of the... Michael, are you talking about Unraid or are you talking about Windows 98? And um, did I need to rerun the Docker? Or is this fine just for testing to see if it would do it? This is fine just for testing, just to see if we get... Um, yeah, nothing's happening. 
Uh, there Michael, is, just to one. show you, if you want, go into apps and search for uh, Win98 in a box right here. And that is all you need to do this. Um, but you need at least a hardware sound card, which we could do with, in a couple of minutes to just to make the stream, just to get it working. Uh, but if you want to have a video card like we're doing, um, that's where you need to jump through hoops like this. Because while the virtualized video card's fine, this is an exact original experience. All right, Ed, so, so kill this one. This yeah, there's one one more test I'd like to do, please. If you if you could just click add VM, and we're going to make a totally different VM. Sometimes um, it's good just to test with nothing else. So just just choose um, custom Windows um, XP template, and for the hard drive, you, you can just leave all of that as is. Just don't don't bother changing any of that. Um, for the primary VDIS, just put non on the primary VDIS location. Okay. Drop down menu to non, and just try passing the graphics card through. Oh, I see. And that's it. I see what you're doing. I just okay. wanted to just see with nothing else, do we get anything like it's just trying to do something? Just blinking. No, blinking. All right. So uh, that's interesting. All right. So what if we um, remove the XP, edit? You know, what if we just go in and for graphics card virtual, and do we just leave everything default? Um, let's see what it is, virtual, PNC. Yep, that should be fine. In fact, can you just go back, go back into the... Uh, sorry, I already fired it up. Let's just see. It's, okay, it's not, already not booting. Well, what was uh, yeah? So we know it's working. yeah. That that was that was kind of why. <laughs> um, I I didn't see the graphics card type. Um, hey, thanks so, so you, much, MT. If you edit, much appreciated. If you edit the template there. So MT eighty three still said I'd put money on power for the adapter, but. Would we have gotten video on the bio screen if it was a power issue? You, I wouldn't think so. Uh, I wouldn't either. Thanks very so much, MT. Looking... Much appreciated. Thanks for hanging around, too. So what we're looking for is the video console driver. Um, if you scroll down a little bit. Here? Okay, it, it is set to QXL, so it should. It shouldn't have been in that funny color. JKLO yeah, said less, I less would it. get video in BIOS since it needs less power. So if everything looks good, should I just uh, put this back to Sirius Logic and then just uh, add that power adapter? Yeah, why why not? It's, it's, it's worth a try if, you, if it's not difficult to do. I want to take a minute. Um, I'm going to rerun your Docker now. And then power off the machine while I yeah, do it. I think I think what we could do as well, Bob, just to um, reset everything, is why don't we delete the VM while you do that, and we'll rerun the Docker container just to make a fresh one. 
Uh, I'll do that second, but that's a great idea too. So let me um, let me just find which box that power adapter is in, uh, which should only take a moment because I have all my crap right here. Uh, um, I'll, I'll just be right back as well, Bob. I'll just be two moments. Yep. Do you think? Uh... I wonder what would happen if we added up all the time that I've spent rummaging through boxes during live streams. <laughs> I wonder how long it would actually be. I mean, just sitting here rummaging. Okay, I found an IDE power supply. And let me just grab an IDE to SATA adapter and we should be golden. Bam. All right. Uh, nope, different kinds. I gotta have them. I have everything in here. Whole bunch of crazy crap. There's gotta be those convert. Yeah, I got one right here. Beautiful. Oh wow, you know what's funny is the connector is in a way where you can't have the connector and the cards plugged in. Whoever designed this adapter didn't, well I guess I could jam it in. They didn't take that into account. Oh, you you having the same problem I did, that the cards are in the way of the SATA. Yeah, I, I was able to just kind of jam it in, but uh, mm. that was a very stupid design flaw. <laughs> it's, it's, wow. It is okay. crazy, isn't it? It's almost like they make these things without actually testing them. What, what I did on mine is I got like um, a file and just filed down the top of the SATA as flat as I could until I almost hit the bare wires. <laughs> While we're waiting for this to boot up, I'm going to get the rest of this acrylic box shavings off of my table. <laughs> Might as well make myself useful. We'll have a vacuum, my spider vacuum stream. It was strange, Bob, wasn't it, that... Just saying, Bob, it was strange that when we passed through the Sound Blaster to Windows 10 that it didn't just have the drivers built in for that. I also thought that was weird. It was. Okay. All right, so 
Let me just go through and check everything step by step. It only takes an extra second, so. That's passed through. Here's logic. We don't need to do anything. Let me just fire this up, right? Yep. yep. Nothing. We know it's not power, I guess. Mm. Um, so I will. I will have another look at. It. I'll. I'll dig out my Cirrus logic card and um, reset everything up with hardware pass through, and see if I can find if there's any any difference. So how about this? When I last ran it. Let me power the server off, throw the Sound Blaster card back in, mm -hmm. and we'll do the uh, the VM with uh, with that connected as well, so that we could in a virtualized um, video, so that we could we could just see is this going to work? Is it not going to work? Yeah. Etc. Um... We may have to uninstall the drivers that are there. For the sound card and then reinstall possibly okay we're powered off there powering off the external thingy let me get this let me get this card in. Hilariously jamming it next to the power connector they very stupidly put in here. What the hell? Well, I guess if it's still not working, let me just try it without the external power. And just the sound blaster card plugged in. Yeah, it, it should definitely power that for sure. So theoretically, this same thing should be able to work for anybody with a system that can do uh, pass through, right? So uh, it yeah. would have to be Linux because I guess Windows doesn't really pass through hardware, right? No, no. It would, it would, and any um, QM, UKVM, like Proxmox, it should work. Um, I'm not sure if TrueNAS scale does pass through, um, but if it does, that would work too. But even if you're just like running Linux, like... yeah. Even just running, even just running Linux. Like if you're running, you know, Ubuntu desktop, you, you better do that too. Yeah. I uh, I've always been very interested in using an Unraid PC as my main PC, with like the uh, onboard video for Unraid and uh, you know my thirty sixty card for the Windows ten or eleven VM and go in there, but I'm always terrified of something like this happening for my main PC. So I run into a situation where I go to use a capture card and then I can't because of these types of compatibility issues. Yeah. I don't know if that's a valid fear or just my own crazy paranoia with this stuff, but it's definitely something normally, I was thinking of. Normally once it's set up, you'll be fine. So all right, the, the machine behind me there, that, widescreen monitor that's my main pc that all runs off um unraid vms 
Blood Red said they were running Debian has a GPU pass through working perfectly with their uh, modern card. Interesting. Okay. All right, we're getting this back up. Let me clear. So I know it wasn't the power supply. Let me put this back. Oh, this I, I didn't know Hyper V could do pass through. That's cool. I wonder if Hyper V can do pass through. Does that mean? That you'd be able to do something like this in Windows with a yeah yeah yeah. Know, Blood, Blood Red terms. says that he thinks that that Hyper V does do pass through, so that's pretty interesting. I might have to check that out. That would be cool. Let me. I would love to switch to Linux full time. Like all kidding aside, all Linux jokes aside, I just my biggest thing is how many times I've run into an issue that it's just the issue is use windows but then you know you could always say oh we'll just use a vm but then you, there's always these scenarios well i gotta plug this into that and that's gonna route through this and we can't you know there's there's always something ah where the hell is that audio stuff this one Ugh. If 3.5 millimeter to RCA. All right, let's see. Is this long enough to reach my Motu yeah. box? I hope so. Um, Blood Red, you're, you're, you're correct. Um, Hyper-V does support hardware pass-through. They call it disc discrete device assignment that allows you to pass hardware such as GPUs directly to the virtual machine. Yeah, of course they don't call it hardware pass-through. Why would you call it something easy for people to understand? <laughs> Yeah. Fuck you, Bill Gates. <laughs> it should be called DDA, of course. You know what? <laughs> okay. So I got audio connected. Hopefully the server's back up. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Uh, All right, so we have to reboot once again with these, right? Yeah. What well, I'm think I'm I'm thinking something here. I'm not sure if we have to pass through the whole bridge manually. Was that available to check off? Cuz I didn't see it. No, it's not. Like it's not. And normally you wouldn't do that, but Let me see if I can get the audio capture through here as well. You know what? I'm not going to do that until after we get the VM booted because I'm afraid that there's going to be pops and clicks and loudness. And let me, let me yeah. do that in a little bit of a safer way.
Okay. That's not the controller, is it? Sorry, I, I wasn't looking. Um, uh, the controller the, is 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 the PCI bridge here on Group Fifteen. So I was, I was wondering if we should have tried to manually stub um, that there, so the whole IO MMU group is actually bound to VFIO. That would make sense. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we'd have to manually do that. All right. So let's just go into the VMs then. But let's see if we can just get the sound working with this. Creative Labs. And then graphics card virtual. Update. Yeah, and make sure to make sure to remove. You know, run run the the Docker, then remove the emulated Sound Blaster. That one, right? Yeah. yeah. And the line underneath it too. Ah shit. <laughs> Unraid or Unraid, I think we'll try and add it back in anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. That one, right? Ninety seven? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. And now I have to plug the uh, USB well, keyboard well, in, right? Well, well, we've got a really horrible picture on the back. So what, what we need to do, Bob, is just um, force shut the VM. Okay. Uh... Force, force stop it then. And um, go back to the container. Uh, like... so, sorry, the, the, the actual Docker container for quick wind. Um, edit, edit the template of that. Scroll down a bit. So, what to do if VM exists? If you change it from fix XML, drop down box there, where it says fix XML, if you click onto that writing. Yeah, it says backup, then install. Oh, is that not coming oh, no. through in the capture? That's no, funny. It's, it's not. No, it just still says, it still says fix. It. Oh, okay. So the only other option is backup then install. Yes, I just. Okay, and hit apply. It will just rename the original one. This, then it will just make a fresh version. Okay, and do I run the Docker container again, or do I go into the VM and edit the XML again? Um. Yeah, let's go in. I'm not. I can't remember if it's the original XML or just. Let, let's go back to VMs now. While, while it's running, just click Edit. Okay, 
Okay, but what, what we'll do is, is just go, go back to the VMs tab. And force stop the VM. Now click onto it and click remove VM. And just go to the domain share as well, please. On to the left. Of the oh, page. yep, sorry. So you can files. I just want to make sure that the whole is 98 on. You just highlight next to that the little tick box. And then yeah, it's all the still there. We just need to get rid of all of this. Just delete the whole folder. Okay, now just go back into Docker. Yeah. Go back to Docker. Change the setting back to fix XML. I want to turn off actually start VM after. And now, what is it doing? Is it uh, re-downloading? If you. Yeah, um, it's probably already done. It's probably already made the VM already. Go back to the VMs tab. So if you just open a VNC graphics. Done. What was the password that you put for this? Um, there's no password. Or there's either no password or it's retro. Now. No password it is. Okay. Um, so let's shut down now. Well, is the audio installed? Or no, because we didn't attach it in the VM window. No, we haven't attached it. So just um, shut the VM down gracefully. Uh, or, no, not, not gracefully. Shit. Uh, all right. We could probably do it passing through a USB keyboard as well, couldn't we? So we're going to want to add these sound cards, and uh, I don't have a USB keyboard plugged in. Should I have? Should I do that? Should I hit update then go plug the keyboard in? Yeah, it can. Because you don't have to reboot for a USB device. Okay, that's plugged in with a very short USB cable. Uh, edit. This one, right? Hit update. And now run the Docker again. Run the Docker again. Last step, we just remove the emulator. And that's the uh, going to edit and go to the XML and delete the two lines, not one line. Oh, here it is. Okay. 97, 98. And update and run, right? Um, I'm not the keyboard's not working because we haven't installed it yet. So I, I think I have to do that through. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Uh, 
that's the sound blaster. Didn't you put it in data Windows 98? No. Shit. I don't think so. They have actually taped it. Library might need to. So we can get it from the website. Bills can. This worked last time. Yeah, but it, 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 we've not tried to have, we've not had a, um, a real sound card in. Because that's what it's no, but I skipped it. I skipped it to try to add the input device. Yeah. Yeah, like, let me click on, damn it. So the keyboard is not working and the touchpad's not working. So should I try to close this down? Um, you don't really need the real keys. Um, yeah, but the, wasn't there a fix for the arrow from last time? Where I couldn't get all the way to the edges of the oh, window. Yeah. You, you just make the VNC window like large. Left hand side. Oh, that's right. Okay. Okay. And let me change the resolution. Funny, it's still not, still not let me get to the start menu. By changing the scaling mode. Yeah, it's doing the same thing in that um, I can't get it to the edges of, I guess I can get it here. When I try to go to the start menu, let me, uh, oh no, it's working now. Now it's just in windowed mode. So that, that was a help. Okay. Um, should I shut the, shut this down and see what else we could try? Yeah. So I think we need to install the driver. Driver for the sound card. If we just if we shut down, we're going to do it in a bit of a strange way, Bob. Okay. Okay, so we're going to use your Windows 10 machine to download the thing, but you can just click on the Windows 98 name of the VM just so we can see what the. Because there's two in there. So. Just on the word Windows 98, just click onto its name. And the second VDisk, just copy that location, that mount user domains VDisk to. And copy that. And then add that as a second VDisk in your Windows 10. And then we can, um, as long as we're not running them both together, then we'll download the driver. It will be on the D drive, and then we can install it. So set that to manual. Perfect. You know, I just realized um, we could also install the Sound Blaster onto this. We could, yes. Just to see if it's a 98 issue or a um, 
or a unread issue. So, okay. Uh, so, well, so where you want to go, just do a, do a Google search for Phil's Computer Lab. And let's go to drivers. Maybe it's hardware. Software sound. Creative Labs drivers. Creative Labs, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I think that's probably the one we need. All right, so that's overall pretty good. It's what we need, right? So let me. Hopefully, uh, that's the correct one. Didn't assign the drive. But maybe I just need to assign it right here on the device manager or disk manager. Oh, hang on. Ah. You know what I could do though? I could take those files and turn them into an ISO and mount that as a CD-ROM drive. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Good idea. Or, or what we should do really, Bob, is we should use RetroNAS to mount a share. Yeah. That's probably for another day. Yeah, so I'm gonna shut this down. Uh, and that was Phil's computer drivers, right? Phil's computer lab. Okay. I should just download all of the Sound Blaster drivers you can find on there, you know, because um, there seemed to be quite a few, didn't there? Yeah. I agree. I'm not Labs. sure what the difference is between them all. Um, I'm not going to bother sharing my screen for this just because we've spent quite a bit of time. I just want to, what I'm going to do is open up image burn. Um, it'll take longer to share the screen than it will just to do this. And I'm going to create image file from files and folders. I'm going to select those two things that I just downloaded. I can see. So what the sound card you've, you've got, got, is that the sound blaster live? I believe so. Okay, so if you look on his website, go to hardware, and then audio, then sound cards, go to PCI sound cards, and then you'll find Sound Blaster Live about halfway down, and I'm hoping there's a, and then the drivers. Um, then oh, we've got the Windows right. 98 so drivers like... right at the bottom. Right, that's hold the on. one we need. Yeah, you're right. I might have gotten. So I have Creative Sound Blaster Live CT4780. Is that what it is when it's unzipped, is it? No, that's the actual card that I bought, the Sound Blaster Live. So you're saying on Phil's Computer Lab, I had to. Uh, here, let me see if I could do this on. This I could probably do on stream fairly easily. So let's. Uh, where did that go? Okay. This. Another tab in. So where was the one that you were talking about? So go go on to hardware, then audio, sound cards, then PCI sound cards, and then Sound Blaster Live. All right, so I did actually right down download the, the wrong ones. So if you scroll right down to the bottom, that one. There's the Windows 98. I think that's going to be the one we need. Okay, so then let me. Um... Yeah. 
that was in downloads. I put it okay. And same thing. I'm just going to go to image burn. It uh, says here the drivers won't work with all live cards, especially OEM versions. Successfully tested with SB0100 and SB0060. And the, jo the Joseph's... Um, all right, image burns done. So let me if, drop if, that, that. if that driver doesn't work, there's another one I'm just reading here that will probably work more successfully because it's meant to work with any Sound Blaster card reading Phil's website here. All right, so I'm going to go back into here. That should have shut down properly. I'm going to remove that extra drive from it so I don't make a mistake next time. Oh, no, that one should be there. That one clicked on the Windows quickly. 10? No. That's oh, is that Windows the Windows 10? 10 yeah. Is it? Oh, okay. okay. I was just removing that from the 10 so I don't mess something up next time. Right. Now, for this one, I'm going to be uh, so. OS install CD, I could just use it as that, right? Yes. Uh, update. Do I need to run your Docker again? Um, no, let's just try without it. It will boot. I, I think we don't need to. All it, all it does is add the Pentium 3 to be a Pentium 3. So this is work. being it's, a pain being again. Patched. Um, so let me leave it and be, not be impatient. What was the second thing of drivers that you thought were, might be the, the best one for this? Uh, if you look at the, um, if you scroll down a bit on this same page we're on, up a little bit more, I believe it's those two there. You see where it says Joseph's um, mm. drivers? I think he's kind of made a modification to these and they work with any sound blaster, even if they're not... Um, even if they're an OEM version, so I'm guessing the 2.1 zip will be the will be the best one. So I think we should download and use that one as well. Okay. I think I think probably even try that one first. Server seems to have frozen up again. Yeah, totally frozen. So let me um, reboot that again. Okay, coming back up. And while I'm doing that, I could just use, I could just make um, uh, ISO of that other one as well. Run image burn again. Okay.
Could we bridge the Windows 98 VM into the host network in this setup? We would have to do so uh, using um, Unraid, correct, Ed? I'm not Unraid, I'm sorry, uh, RetroNAS, RetroNAS. Yeah, we could use RetroNAS and um, be able to use a network share then, yes. Then we should just bit a map and network drive in Windows 98 straight to the RetroNAS share. There we go. Okay. Let me put that ISO file that I just created with the auto G drivers into the ISOs. Beautiful. All right. VM. Now, if you wouldn't mind watching along for a moment, the only weird thing I just did that froze this. Uh, uh oh. I, um, oh no! Here I'm, we go. I'm okay. losing. I'm losing you a minute. Am I still here? Yeah, the screen's very pixelated. I'm just going to check. There's nothing on my server that's using all the bandwidth. Let me just check. Nothing's. And I've killed our. Connection. Yes, it's better. I think we probably want to can don't we want to cancel this? And then run these setups. Yeah, so but we probably want to cancel this and run the actual setup. So here's the PCI um, input controller. I, I, is this that, the that keyboard? would be that would be the game controller for the joystick. Okay, the I can card. cancel that. So up, up to my computer. Yeah, the mouse is still being a little weird, so I'm gonna do it this way. All right, RG2, run setup exe. Quick. Did seem very quick, didn't it? I'm having a, oh, here we go. Okay, come on, get up there, mouse. Direct X setup. Probably already got this in this direct X. Okay, and let's do I try for auto or just skip it? I think let's try for auto and see if it finds it. For fuck's sake. 
Okay, so now we browse to number D to. I'm wondering if it's actually installed now. Which one would I have needed? The WDMs, right? I th I think I'm not I'm not really sure to be honest. Um... Okay, we have got the Windows ninety eight there. So if you click OK. Pretty sure that, that's it there. That should be working. I guess that's just the input controller, so let me skip it for now. I'll keep that file. Oh. Right, so we look in the device manager and see. I'm not sure if we have to install every single. Yeah, I, I had a real hell of a time getting to the uh, start menu. Maybe if I make it really small. No. Yeah, man, this is. Uh... Wait, all right, hold on. Okay, uh, let me turn up the volume on this, and let me also... So this isn't definitely loud here. I think my screen's lagging. It still says creative driver update utility for me. But do you see the volume icon in the bottom? No. Yeah, this VM window is just not liking Windows 98 at all. Like, not even a little bit. Try expanding it to full to a full size window again. You hear that? We are getting audio. Oh. I can't hear anything myself, but I take your word for it. <laughs> we should hear that on stream as well. So I'm going to shut this down. Uh, and then I'm going to um, edit this VM so that I could have one of the games installed on it. And we're just going to try that for a second, just to uh, just to say that we had a successful stream. Uh, Which is the um, USB keyboard and mouse that we plugged in last um, last month, Bob? Is that the same one we tried to plug in a moment ago? Uh, yes. It's strange it's not working, isn't it? Because last time it just picked it up straight away. Just hit onto that connect button there, Bob. Say, uh, say what? Uh, I think I'm just seeing such a lag. I'm not seeing what you're seeing. That's all. It just says no VNC connect on my. Uh,
Yeah, it's being weird. Oh, and now it's just working. Okay, it wasn't a second ago, but now I guess it is. So... How is it looking on stream? Because I'm in full screen right now. I can only see a quarter of the screen myself um, through, through Damn. Discord. Let, let me check what the stream looks like a moment. Um, came off the stream. I'm not getting the sound through. Uh, Please through the... select a race course. Oh, wait. Here we go. Oh, I can hear. Please choose manual or automatic transmission. Gentlemen, start your engines. Look at that draw distance. <laughs> yeah, the sound is coming through the stream, but but um, you can only see a part uh, part of it. Yeah, we can't see the whole we can't see the whole screen. Oh, hang on. Better. That's better. Yay. Well, so I think what we've learned from this three hours this time and two and a half hours last time is whoever is working on that Windows 98 virtual sound driver should, uh, should, should get on it. And if they need help, uh, we can try to ask people in the community to assist because that was way more challenging than it all should have been. And that is definitely my luck. But if I'm going through it, you know somebody else is going to go through it too. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Bob, is I'm going to redo the um, Windows 98 in the box. I'm going to add a second option for when you want to pass through hardware. So it will have things like the this this driver kind of on on the on the um, on the desktop ready to install and that kind of thing. So to make it easier for people to actually um, go forward with it, and I'll do a bit more. Looking into getting that Cirrus Logic graphics card working as well. I want to try one oh, last thing combat. before we call it. Because I think it would just be fun, but we'll see what happens. Look, just a little tip, Bob. You can always start the VM with the VNC console at the same time to not have to go not a, if uh, Not in all browsers if you have blocked pop-ups. Ah, uh, okay, I see. I don't even know this will work. Oh, are you serious? Get out of here, Mortal Kombat. Oh, maybe somebody hacked it to go past that. Okay, good. I remember when I used to play this, I got my friend so angry, he snapped the controller in half. <laughs> but I kept doing the same move again and again. And he was going, oh, can't you do any other moves? And I said, well, why would I when it's working? And he, he, he rage quitted and snapped the controller in half. That is very, very funny. Very funny. All right, well, that's not going to work without some kind of setup. Let me try one last, last tiny little thing here, and then we'll call the stream. This should be an easy one. It should just work. Or not? Oh, 
Classic retro gamer behavior. It finally works. Okay, time to power off. <laughs> I hear you. All right. Well, we gotta we gotta see one more game running before we uh, we call it. So let me try one last one then. We've also got Doom that's pre-installed on the VM. We did that last time though. That would be cheating. Ah, but we didn't hear it with audio last time. So you're right. If this doesn't work, then know. that's what I shall do. There was no audio. must have burned those wrong well i didn't burn all of them wrong so uh... This is running so much smoother than it ever ran when I owned a Windows 98 PC. That is pretty funny. Well, you know, at least you know, at least you know it all works. Yeah. I'm not sure why your GPU didn't pass through, but... I will dig out my Cirrus Logic card again. Because my, my Voodoo 3 card works. And my Cirrus Logic always used to work, but it has been a little while since I tried the pass through. It was before I made 6.12, so I will try it all on 6.12 and see if there's any things that need to be changed. Okay, that is exactly what I thought was going to happen. Uh, as soon as I. Um... Uh, as soon as I turned off the VM, you started to hear the buzz from the audio card. So, um, I guess as we're cleaning this up, what are my next steps until, uh, the next revision of this? Should I, um, should I leave that card in the server, uh, and then just, uh, just not plug in the external box until we're ready? Yeah, I think that, I think that's fine to do. Um... Well, pro probably I, I would actually take out the take out the PCIe card out of the server. Okay. Just just because you don't want that USB with the metal piece flapping around that's connected to the um, actual motherboard. That is a very very good point. All right, I will do all of that now. So I guess the follow up is going to be uh, you're going to work on the installer to try to get around some of the weirdness that we found, um, and then. Yep. Uh, I will double check if I could find any specific drivers for that video card or not. And that's basically it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And one more thing I'm going to try is there are some beta sound drivers for Unraid. I am going to speak to the dev about them. And I know they, they don't work on my server, the beta drivers. They don't pick up my sound card. But if I plug in a cheap five bucks USB sound card, from Amazon, it picks up that. So what I'm going to try and do is actually emulate the sound blaster to use the host sound through that USB. Okay. And then that will give that will give people a, a way forward to be able to run the VM, buy a five dollar USB sound stick, and then be able to have sound and video. So that's what I'm going to try and do. All right, that would over totally the, make sense. Over the next few weeks. And so, I will have all of this stuff reassembled and ready, and we will kind of go from there. Cool, man. Cool. All right, well, thanks to everybody oh, in the chat for sitting through all this. <laughs> we really appreciate it. Uh, I had a great yeah. time. I can't imagine this was a, a fun stream to watch, so thank you all for sticking <laughs> with us. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, so Sorry we'll... it went wrong so much. <laughs> all good. We'll see you all next time.